hey welcome to my channel this is Nolan here and in this video I'm gonna make a knife so if you have not subscribed my channel yet and you are new kindly consider subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload my new videos okay so let me show you the image so this is the image I'm gonna do I mean this is the image of the knife which I'm gonna do and I know it's a little bit simple and basic and again this video is for beginners and who has never used G modeler inside GBrush so it's kind of an introduction video to G modeling G modeling so if you are a pro at that and you know G modeling then kindly don't watch this video it's gonna cover basic stuff so let's start I'm gonna move this to my second monitor and the first thing here I, I want to do is importing that texture as a background image here so that I can kind of work I can model on top of that kind of tracing thing if you want to do that we need to go to texture before I do anything actually I need to I want to increase this canvas size so let's go to document and hit on this double option okay now I have a bigger canvas area to work with so let's go to texture and click on the import option okay now let me browse my image so let's import that so this is a png image as you can see there isn't anything the image is not here the image is here you can see once you import that image is here we need to select that and hit this spotlight option so we need to use the spotlight if you have never used spotlight before then you can you know check some tutorials or you can follow me uh, not a big deal so here you can see the spotlight controls and here we can f uh, kind of move this image uh, anywhere by clicking on this image area i can just move that like this so i'm using my wacom tablet here and you can use your mouse doesn't matter you can just hold left mouse or your pen and drag to move the image and position it if you want to scale it let's say i want to scale up a little bit so i can do that by uh, using this icon so you can see there are a lot of icons and i'm gonna use this to scale you can just drag on that icon you can see that's got highlighted now you can scale and position it like this once you are happy with the position and scaling we can drop it so basically i think i can also make it a little bit transparent so that it it's not that contrast look i mean it should be a little bit dull so that we can see the model easily so we can do that by going to the opacity here we can dial it down you can see and now it's a little bit weak transparent okay now i want to drop it there and then start working uh, with the model so i can do that by pressing a g so if i do that it's there and now we are in this draw mode we can take anything i think i'm gonna start with i'm gonna start with a cube maybe we'll do the basic stuff first and for that i think uh, let's start with this star i'm gonna draw that and then start with it and you can see that the star is there if i oh i kind of accidentally i'm drawing it because i i'm not in edit mode so let's go to edit mode and press ctrl n to get rid of other things the latest will be here and now you can see i can kind of using gbrush like i used to i mean we are rotating and not doing our stuff so here my x axis is i'm checking my x axis so this is my x axis okay so this is this would be the side so the first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna change this star to a plane and then start creating the overall contour shape okay so let's switch to maybe move and then click on you when you click this move option you'll find this gizmo and then we have some option here i can click on this uh, click on this little setting icon and then i'm gonna choose this polyplane okay and you may not able to see that because that's a plane and you cannot see that from the opposite angle it's good to have double side it, if you don't see anything kindly come down here display properties hit on this double option so that you can see the polygon face from both side 
okay and okay not a big thing not a big issue here i'm gonna adjust it so this is my plane if i turn on my poly frame you can see i have quite a bit of polygons going on so i don't want this much of polygons first so what i can do we can use this uh, cone kind of ice cream cone you can say red ice cream green ice cream cone and the ice cream part is missing by the way so i'm gonna drag these things to control these edge loops here i want very minimum and here you can see i may i may need to scale it so let's go to scale and scale it so okay i'm still in this mode so what i'm gonna do is clicking on this little setting icon again and switch back to gizmo because we are in we are still in this polyplane mode okay if you don't understand anything kindly repeat and rewatch you'll get it and now i can scale it so let me move this gizmo we can do that holding alt if i move it from here it's basically moving the object but if i kind of just want to move the gizmo then i can hold alt and then do it okay so it's a very good option to kind of scale it let's say you position it here and then want to scale from this side you can do that and again let's say i positioned it here and want to scale this way only i put the kind of gizmo here to this area and then scale it so basically i'm scaling from these boxes so basically let's get this overall overall kind of proportion and then i'm gonna use my move brush so here i have my brushes so i'm using a custom interface here if you don't i'll you are not gonna see the process here you need to come here and choose i mean for move you can press m and uh, you can see all the process start with m letters and then you can choose m i, I mean the move brush from there okay so now i'm gonna adjust this vertex i mean these points here we don't I think they don't call this vertex here. They're points inside G plus. I mean same thing. So here I'm adjusting this top. You can see adjusting this. Adjusting the points. I have two lines in between there. If it's uh, I think it's visible. So I'm adjusting the overall shape. You can even have one edge loops in between rather than two from start and then we can add any time we want so here you can see i just did that thing i just created that plane here okay now that is my what is that that is my basic plane so it doesn't have any thickness so we are gonna do that uh, in a minute i think before i do that I have a hole here so I may I may want to do that let me put this point here maybe here on point so I may want to add add one is loop here uh, I'm thinking whether I should do it right now okay let's add one is loop so we are working here with G modeling but we have not chose the G model brush yet so I'm gonna find the G modeling brush so if you press G You'll find this G modeler. Let's bring that. And if you hope over any edge here, you can see it says insert as loop tool. That's uh, set to insert as loop tool. If you hold space bar and you are on an edge, any edge, uh, you'll see edge option, edge action options, and then target. So we have two areas here. Now it's set to insert and single edge loop. That means if I click on or click and drag on any edge, I'm gonna get a edge loop. You can see okay i think uh, i'm gonna get back the get back the spotlight by pressing g and then switch i mean dial the opacity even down so that i can see my object better okay now you can see i'm gonna put a uh, press g again to kind of put that there and then let's start adjusting it so basic thing basic save adjustment here not a big mm, no thing here so just basic stop here and then i'm gonna uh, do one thing 
I think we are gonna extrude and get the thickness. I think I'm gonna put one more edge loop here and there and let's adjust maybe and at the same time I don't want to put a lot of points here. It's always good to have fewer lines, fewer points to adjust and then eventually we're gonna increase it. Okay, I think I'm happy with this and then I'm gonna in give it a little bit thickness. Okay. So if you want to kind of hide the image, you can press Shift G and uh, again Shift G to bring it back. It basically hide the background image. Okay, now I'm gonna give it thickness. Now it doesn't have any thickness. So if you hover over any polygons, so now I'm calling these faces polygons here. So if I if I hover over any polygons, now that's highlighted. Now it's set to QMS. And if I hold spacebar, I can see all the options here, polygon action, target area. So now it's set to QMS. A QMS is basically like extrude, a little bit kind of more magical, uh, little bit more advanced, I would say, uh, the QMS is. And I can use extrude as well. All A single poly, if I have this setting, extrude a single poly, and I drag on a polygon, you can see it extrude that polygon. And in this case, I want to extrude the whole thing. So that's why I'm going to change this to all polygon. So I'm getting this menu by holding space bar. Okay, let's extrude and give it a little bit thickness. I'm not exactly sure what would be the thickness. But again, uh, this is the thickness, I guess. Okay, we want one at the center. One at the center. So we can do one thing. We can... Let's first find the axis orientation. Now you can see that this is the front axis, which is the X. And this is not of, I mean, we want the Z axis. So I'm gonna weld, mirror and weld basically. Go to geometry and modify topology. If you want, want this to kind of half and mirror it to the other side. Let's say you are just one side and want to mirror to the other side. We can do that. Let's go to mirror and weld. I need to change this to from X to G. You can see that little X is highlighted. Let's change it to G and click mirror. Now it says the resulting 3D image doesn't contain any polygons operation cancelled. Okay. I mean it says there's any polygon action. Okay, my symmetry is not turned on, so that's why. So I'm gonna actually turn on my symmetry again. G, and I need to find out that. Okay, it's not not at the center as well. So now this model is not at the center. So what I'm gonna do is uh, let's go to geometry and position, and here you can see the G position has some weird value. So let's press G. I mean zero to the G axis. Uh, G axis here. Again, let's go to modify topology, try mirror weld. Now it uh, did its job here. You can see it mirrored and we got a got an, got an center edge basically. <clears throat> so before you do this, make sure that uh, the model is at the center. So for that, what I did, I went to geometry and under the geometry option, you can find position and I kind of put zero in the G position because this is the G axis here. And this is the X axis. So just find your model axis. It doesn't have to be G. You might you know uh, kind of doing your uh, knife in this direction. So the axis would be different. So you'll, you need to find it by you know, pressing the symmetry and see if it's X or G. Or you can look at this. If you are looking at this face like this, that means you are at G axis. <coughs> Okay, now I'm gonna adjust it real quick. I mean, it's not flat. I think we can, what I can do is let's mask. I'm gonna mask this areas, the side area and leave the center. And uh, let's invert the mask, holding control and clicking outside, invert it. Let's bring the scale. And here I'm gonna maybe Put the scale somewhere at the center. I'm not sure you can put at put the center at the center and then scale like this. 
So basically what I'm doing, I'm getting this round shape. What I did, I masked both sides because uh, I'm using symmetry. I just masked one side and it did the other side masked and then I can reverse the mask so it masks this center area and then I'm scaling you can also just mask the center area and then do it same thing I mean that's more straightforward so now I'm gonna use move brush and now I cannot differentiate the model from the background so I'm gonna change the background color a little bit maybe making it a little bit lighter so i'm dragging this range option towards left so it's making the background more flat uh, so i i was no i had a kind of gradient background so this is the you know, basic shape here for the handle i think i need to move this so i'm using the move brush make sure the symmetry is turned on okay now if i press d and uh, d when i press d that means i'm using dynamic subdiv and if i turn on dynamic here or press d same thing uh, now it's asking me basically confirming so let's press maybe yes always yes okay now you can see the preview it's like pressing three inside maya so it's a smooth preview it's not the real polygons we don't have polygons to work you cannot sculpt anything in between here because we don't have actual polygons it's just a preview but we can convert this preview to actual polygons so we are gonna do that uh, later but here you can see this is the handle i can turn up the poly frame and see let i don't like this material so let's change it to basic material maybe okay i'm looking at the concept i mean um, on my other monitor and i'm looking at the overall shape i think we need to put some supporting edge to con uh, kind of hold this area and i want the body a little bit rounded looking so i'm gonna turn off this you can do this by pressing shift d as well okay let's turn on polyframe it's a bit easier so i'm gonna uh what i'm gonna do i'm gonna mask this stuff or oh, this stop holding control basically let me hold control and change this freehand to lasso so that i can basically draw the inside part and mask these things you can see i'm masking those points or inside points okay i mask those points and gonna i'm gonna reverse it hold control and click anywhere in this canvas area now everything is masked except this area now i'm gonna scale those so at this stage i'm trying to get the overall volume overall form of the handle so it's rounded there i mean rounded there and there are a few edges which is sharp so i'm looking at that i think yes I think that is fine so here i'm gonna put some supporting edge loops to hold hold the shape or i can even go and uh, use creasing option so let's use crease if i press d or turn on dynamic i can see everything is very very smooth uh, now i'm gonna use crease so if i go to crease here and i can do the creasing manually if i uh, click on this crease option here it's gonna do it automatically let's see and uh, now you can see every corner is basically which the edge has more than maybe 90 degree or more than 45 degree that is got creased and uh, even though we have dynamic soft dip turned on i mean the smooth modifier turned on because of the crease you can see these dotted dotted lines those are the crease because of those crease now we can see the hard edges okay i can go ahead dynamic subdiv increase the smooth subdiv maybe three or four so that you can see a little bit smoother version but the crease is too high okay now i'm gonna uh, let me turn on this i'm gonna decrease this crease label to one okay uh, maybe one or two let's see so one now you can see we have kind of creased lines those edges are are still kind of holding the shape but not that much 
I mean uh, you can see the edge corner edge if I increase all now you can see it's very very smooth let me undo uh, so again uh, go to crease and I just undo that so let's see. you can put maybe two and you'll get more sharp edges and if you want very very smooth geometry then we need to come down to here and increase the smooth level here you can see now four is working pretty good and we have the mask that's why it was kind of looking weird okay now you can see hard edges and if i show you the image here you can see we have a corner here and then round shape here and then we have some corner here okay so what i'm gonna do is increase this line so we don't want to crease this line so it would be more rounded then how can i do that how can i increase it so let me turn my polyframe so that i can see the edges okay we can increase by using g modeling brush okay let me re bring my g modeling brush if i hover over any edge doesn't matter any edge and hold space bar get the edge action menu and from here i'm gonna change this insert to a crease and again single edge fine i just want to increase this edge for this time okay now i can increase by holding alt and click on the edge now you can see as soon as i click i get a smooth rounded shape uh, these edges are still hard uh, creased but that is round so it gave us this round shape so very very useful and everything looks fine except this edge now you can see i got this edge creased hold alt and creased like that okay now if i turn off this you can see the shape so we uh, kind of adjusted the basic shape and then we're using this dynamic subdue with creasing a crease option okay let's do the handle and i might come back to this and do some other stuff but let's do the handle so let's first focus on bigger stuff okay now i'm gonna come i can bring the image back pressing shift g okay uh, now i'm gonna do this part again same technique i'm gonna import i mean append a plane so let's go to sub tool append i'm gonna append a polygon plane plane 3d maybe let's append that and i'm gonna change it to i'm gonna use move and change click here and change to polyplane so it gave us uh, the only difference is with this i think i did something weird so let's turn off this dynamic I think let me undo let's select this one so I had the wrong subtool selected that's why uh, make sure you have selected this once you append the polygon plane uh, select that and then I'm gonna switch to plane 3d the only difference is we can actually adjust the topology directly here so let's uh, move it I'll move that piece again i don't want a lot of polygons there so let's move that and adjust it here and again scale it i can put the point here holding alt and then drag like that and then let's put the point here and scale so basically scaling to get that overall shape and then i'm gonna adjust it using move brush let's adjust these points so i want a topology in this way so that i can you know, do this ladder so i think i'm gonna keep this so here we are kind of doing same modeling i mean uh, we used to do these things before uh, in maya i mean box modeling technique and gibras came the way and changed everything you kind of uh, free freely we can sculpt without worrying about topology but again for hard surface kind of thing uh, we still need to do this follow this block uh, and box modeling technique now this topology is going this way okay and maybe we can uh, we can keep put this point here here as long as this topology is going this way we're fine uh, we may need to put one or two edge loops in between these things okay i mean 
I mean we can put here and keep this somewhere here maybe so when you do this stuff make sure you kind of think about the uh, stuff you are doing I mean uh, there are some details which needs particular topology okay that is good so that is the plane here and I think um, I think I can put one or two edge loops there let's go to G modeler and again switch from crease to insert so that I can insert an edge loop here and one edge loop here maybe let's go to move adjust it and beware of uh, you no know, adding a lot of unnecessary poly um, no edge loops you don't want that because if you do that then that will be very hard to adjust big steps later so you don't want that what you want is bare minimum bare minimum edge loops and we have that tools that tool is not going anywhere so you can use it anytime we want uh, to use that so here I'm gonna uh, I think here I'm gonna extrude maybe I think I can do that later once I cannot get the thickness okay I'm fine with this one and now I'm gonna kind of get rid of the background image by pressing shift G and here I'm gonna put a little bit thickness so let's go to G model again this time face and we have the settings there no extrude and all polygons so here you can see if I extrude th this way it's fine but if, if I extrude that way it's kind of flipping the polygons I mean uh, it's kind of reversing it so you see this kind of thing it's fine if you want to extrude this way you just need to come down uh, to the display and flip it or you can just extrude this way it doesn't matter either way we are going to move it to the center here you can see from this angle it's not kind of aligned to the center not position so we need to come down to geometry and i think position where is the position i forgot that it's geometry uh, position let me bring everything yes position g we need to put zero so it's basically bringing the model exactly to the that axis center okay so once you do this and i think uh, we can have one is loop at the center maybe not a big deal i think we can have that so let's mirror it mirror and weld so when you mirror and weld it's gonna again we need to switch to g it's not x axis this angle is g axis i can say that from the head mirror weld okay so here and uh, i think that is fine then i'm gonna this is a little bit thick for a knife a blade especially and here i'm gonna choose my scale from the center we have that exactly at the center so let's scale it i think i rotated it a little bit we need to do it in a little bit carefully I mean I'm scaling it making it thinner you can do it from this angle it's clear to see I was doing it like this so that's bad I think this angle is good and then I'm gonna mask these points because the knife is kind of changing its plane it's kind of straight here and then from this line this line it's gonna change angle and we need to mask that area let me mask this area we can actually mask everything here i think i missed this so make sure i got that every point here now i don't have masked this point so what i'm gonna do is scale those and get that point i mean very sharp line again uh, we need to you no know, avoid uh, making this very very sharp like like a kind of paper don't do that have a little bit thickness because when we are gonna apply dynamic soft div it's gonna lose a little bit of volume maybe so that's why and maybe i'm not exactly sure if i want to inverse it and make these things a little bit wider 
so that I get a good differentiation in this angle I get a good angle basically here okay now we have that basic shape and I just want to continue this area towards here so what I'm gonna do is let's go to a polygons and let's hold spacebar and I think this time I'm gonna use maybe Q mesh and uh, before I do that I need to make a poly group out of these four faces so that I can extrude that area only so I'm gonna hold alt and then paint like this you can press alt and paint to create poly groups when we create poly groups we can apply any of these options uh, to a poly group so now I'm gonna I think I can extrude not a big problem extrude and poly groups if I extrude with all polygons it's gonna extrude everything I don't want that I want to extrude only this poly group okay if you don't have uh, and don't have any idea about polygroups kindly uh, watch some tutorials about polygroups that very simple thing okay now it's basically kind of selecting to select and to apply things on that selection so extrude polygroup all you can choose that polygroup all that doesn't mean it's gonna kind of extrude every polygroup I mean it's gonna extrude this polygroup all so this all the faces in that uh, polygroup Okay, now I'm gonna extrude now you can see it's extrude um, that direction here I'm gonna mask that area maybe mask this area invert the mask holding control and clicking outside so now everything got masked except that area so I'm gonna move that into uh, basically trying to floss that with the knife let me bring the knife image so that I make sure I okay I did a wrong thing I mean when I kind of click this mirror and weld and it was it had the X on so it kind of mirror this angle and not a big deal I'm gonna delete that uh, just kind of ignore that for a minute and and you can notice one thing I'm doing it without turning perspectivity so when you are using an image at the back side I try to not to use this perspectivity so that you can kind of rematch it with the image and do your stop okay actually let's first uh, delete it so I can delete it by uh, let me unmask it I can delete it by let's say hold control shift and just um, drag a box like this and in the green box area you can see I'm keeping this area so it's basically isolating it and now this part is hidden now I can delete that hidden part by coming to modify topology and del hidden so it's gonna delete the hidden object okay now that part is gone and, and now let me bring my knife back trying to match with the knife okay maybe it's not match matching exactly I don't know why I think we need to match it maybe accidentally I scale down that handle maybe I could have done that let's select that and scale it not a big deal sometimes this stuff happens uh, you accidentally scale and move something maybe not a big deal just kind of position it and scale it and then I'm gonna use move brush everything in ZBrush is very very easy so you don't need to worry about anything here and I think I should have extrude this as well and I didn't do that I did it till here so I'm gonna I think do it again so what I'm gonna do it's a good uh, good thing uh, to show, show me I mean show you the QMS option so I'm gonna do that so uh, this time I'm gonna use QMS so let me go to G modeler G modeler and then hover over a face a polygons and let's change this extrude to QMS a single poly that's fine I'm gonna extrude this thing okay let me solo it I mean just I want to see this and hide this one I can come here and hide the eye I mean turn off the eye of that 
Okay, now I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna ex kind of QMS this like that. And you can see the magic. I Earlier I said it's a little bit kind of stronger and magical tool than extrude. Because it's actually, it's a little bit different than extrude. When you extrude, that's kind of extrude and keep the mesh separate. If I extrude now, let me change it to extrude. And extrude this object. Uh, first thing, I need to actually polygroup it and do the stop. And let me actually do, uh, if I do it, you can see it's extrude. It doesn't, it's not kind of snapping and merging it with the other parts. It's still uh, a different piece. If I smooth, you can see uh, it's not merging, not welded here. But if I use QMesh and do the same thing here, you can see, make sure my symmetry is on by pressing X key maybe. Now you can see, uh, I just turn on my symmetry by pressing X. It's kind of extruding and at the same time it's merging, it's welded here. It's not a different piece, it's welded. So that's the beauty of that QMesh. And now that's done. Let me bring my image back. I think it's matching this time. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to move. Maybe let's actually let's keep this point here and let's maybe with a bigger brush keep this here. Overall size. And when we kind of divide it, we lost a little bit of volume here. So I'm gonna move and try to get that arc. Got a little bit kind of volume. We lost a little bit of volume. So again, when you adjust these shapes, don't use a small brush and do this. Uh, try to use bigger brush, bigger move brush, so that you won't get any wobbliness on the mesh. It's still very smooth. Okay, and now mm, I think we need to put one edge loop here at the center so that I can get that curve there. So let me hide the hide that, and then let's put one edge loop here. Again, switch to G modeler and change and put one edge loop. Now the edge loop is going this way, so I can do one thing. Maybe I can actually let let me move this point somewhere here. And when I do this, make sure let me mask and do this. Reverse the mask, and then I'm gonna. If you want to move this gizmo quickly to that area, you can hold Alt and click anywhere uh, just to bring the gizmo to that that place. You can do that, of course. And I'm gonna move that like that, um, so that when I put an edge loop, it comes somewhere here. Uh, this is not exactly symmetrical, so I may try to re-click this. I mean, click mirror and weld, and you can see it correct the other side I mean it again mirrored that okay now I think let me add an edge loop and oh you have the mask okay I think this is fine so now I'm gonna do one thing let me Let me adjust and get that arc there. Let me move here. Move these points. If you want to go close and you can do that by again pressing G, bring the spotlight, scale the image, uh, the background image, and then hit G to put that there and then start working here. If you want to kind of look at the image closely, you can do this and i'm gonna put it here don't worry we can re-click on that mirror and thing option maybe it's not gonna maybe match exactly but again that's not a big thing okay now we have that let me hide the image and now i'm gonna use my dynamic sub -div. so let's go to jmo tree and click on dynamic sub -div hit the dynamic option on and we need to have some crease line so let's go to crease and this time I'm gonna click on crease 
okay now it creates few edges here you can see uh, the dotted uh, lines if i go close you can maybe see those lines the first thing i'm gonna decrease it to maybe two okay so 11 is way too much so i'm gonna have two and then i'm gonna make this edge creased because we have that hard edge so i'm gonna make that crease okay so let's go to my g modeler brush for that g modeler go to any edge highlight that whole space but change this to crease hold alt and i mean sorry don't hold alt we want to crease it so not on crease you can just click to crease and now that edge got creased but in this case we just want to we want to create that whole loop so in this situation i'm i need to change this to edge loop complete and click on the edge now you should have seen you should be able to see that hard edge yeah i know it's not uh, kind of finished here we need to have that line going this way uh, but again this could be a knife but we need to spend more time if you want that i think let me undo i don't think i have the topology maybe maybe we can make this now make this as hard edge okay so let's make this i'm gonna click here make that as hard i don't want that this is to kind of go this way so uh, let me undo and let's change this to again edge only edge so that i can do it one by one like that maybe this maybe yeah i should have uh, turned on my symmetry i think um i have all the edges creased here okay. okay let's see let's see if i have it and okay we have that that looks fine we don't want this crease here so we can hold alt and and increase this edges let's increase this edges i don't want this edges to be creased i just want this line to kind of come and this way kind of turns the corner and here we want we have this kind of round shape we in this situation we don't have that here you can see it's very tight so in this kind of situation i need one supporting edge loops so let me switch to insert and let's put maybe one edge loop here oh let me oh sorry i chose insert that's why insert and then single edge loop is fine let me have an edge loop here you can see now we have a more kind of corner if i put it here you can see and we can still see some polygons that's because we don't have we just have two small smooth subdivision here we need to increase it to maybe three or four and now we have this i know it's very basic but again it gives you the basics of g modeling uh, tool i mean g modeling technique and if you want to make that whole then let's try to do that on this piece and let me go to polyframe and let's turn on the dynamic temporarily so that we can do something here and i'm gonna do the hole here so let's insert this face so i'm gonna hover over this face and let's switch to insert okay now i'm gonna do it single poly so i just want to kind of ins insert is basically extruding and scaling inward in maya or it's exactly in 3d max uh, in 3d max it calls it, it's called inset okay now let me check my symmetry that should be there oh let's turn on the symmetry and let's inset i want to make a hole here so it should be a perfect round in order to get that hole so i'm gonna make this a perfect square i mean perfect square so let's move these points and doesn't matter we are making this kind of manual square here okay this is the square and now i want to create a hole i mean this area needs to be empty uh, kind of through the model how we can do that 
again here you can see the strength the difference between QMES and extrude if I go to G modeler brush and hover over this polygon any polygon actually and then hold space bar now I'm gonna choose uh, QMES and a single poly is fine so now if I drag this out it's kind of extruding but if I go inside you can see if I go inside that way that side maybe actually let me turn off the symmetry that's uh, creating the weird thing so let me go that way and now you can see the hole it's kind of extrude there and kind of snap inside to this side and creates the hole you can see its hole um, if I can put my finger that side you can see my finger there okay now if I turn on my uh, dynamic soft dip I mean dynamic you can see the hole but again it's kind of melted we need to uh, kind of crease those edges let me go to my G modeler hope over any edge change it to crease and I'm gonna crease it let me turn up this let's first crease I think I'm gonna turn on my symmetry again crease these edges so I'm creasing these edges so that you know, when I apply smooth I mean dynamic subdiv the edge is you know, tight and sharp here so let me turn on okay I missed this edge I think so let's click on that sometimes it's very hard to kind of highlight a particular edge but again gbrus g modeling is very powerful and we can manage with it it's not perfect but again it's very very powerful and let me turn off this and you can see uh it's very easy to create holes by using qms and i know it's not perfect i can i can kind of adjust this shape but again it's very close it's very close you can just uh, move these points here and there the more the squ uh, square is kind of perfect square uh, I mean perfect box it will give you a good uh, result here okay now it's done and now I'm gonna put some material uh, just to finish uh, this up so for this thing I'm gonna use maybe maybe the basic material or I think this material is fine we just need to change the color maybe to brown okay something something like that and now i'm gonna choose mrgb and then let's go to color and fill the object now that object got the material and the color now i'm gonna select this one and this time i'm gonna choose a metal material metal zero one and change this color to maybe a little bit dark so now you can see the metalness there something like that okay now i'm gonna fill it with this fill object so now we have a metal material with signs and then this is a simple material we even i can have maybe i can choose m change the material to maybe basic or something but this one and just with the m i'm gonna fill the material we get a little bit sign on this as well okay so thank you for watching this video and please subscribe my channel if you have not and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss anything and if you wonder what i do i do create online courses i teach i teach character tutorials and i'm gonna put the links i'm, I'm gonna put the udemy links there in the description kindly uh, check those out if you are interested thank you for watching this video i'll see you uh, till the next video take care bye bye